it work. He needs to be careful because Clay is there as well. Now around the outside of the Capua into the hairpin. Inside for the next corner. Brendan Lee. That is absolutely sensational. As you can see from that little bit of a teaser clip, today's race is going to be quite an unusual Monaco race. Lots of action to unfold, but you're going to see that later in the video. But round three of PSGL coming up today should be a rather interesting one. Mixed conditions in qualifying and a dry race to follow up. It's going to be a close one, a lot of action like I talked about. So let's get into qualifying. As you can see now, joining us towards the end of Q1 on the soft compound tyres. My first lap on the soft tyres actually. See purple in the middle sector. Seven and a half minutes left on the board. My first lap was done on the medium compound tyres. That's why we're so far up on the delta. But we should be able to get through this session quite comfortably. Coming across the line and going all the way to P2. But it's going to get interesting in Q2. As you can see on our outlap. And it's raining already on the outlap. So we're in a good track position with third car. On track at the moment, see, so just getting a bit of front compound tyres warmed up there. And we're going to need to warm up the rears as well. You need to get extra heat before the lap here, just because you won't have so much grip, so much downforce to load up the tyre in the lap. So the more temperature you can start the lap with, the better in these situations. But you can see, skip it to the end of the middle sector into Q3. And the track is intermediate conditions already. We've got 12 minutes left. But the first sector was completely dry almost. So... It's critical to get through this final corner, set some clean laps here and get across the line. You see, up to the line and we are going to go all the way to P2 on the leaderboard. But with five minutes left in the session, we went out again on the intermediate compound tyres. You see, we went slower in set to one where the track was dry. But now you can see we're finding so much time in the final sector. Four, five temps up. You see the car is rotating so much better. Got a bit of traffic up ahead. The Yoni Tormina. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. If anything, give us a little slipstream towards the line. But you can see coming up now, half a second up on the Delta, all the way to P2. And that'll be comfortably through to Q3. You see backing off there in immediately to save the tyres. But you can see, key note is Thomas is on the soft compound tyres. And the race is forecast to be dry. And everyone else will have the free pick of tyres. They can either start on the hards, mediums or soft compound tyres but Thomas won't have the choice of anything. But Q3 now, three, almost four now minutes left box. on the clock. You see through the final two quarters, we were three and a half temps up, almost four temps up. We decided to box though because if we stayed out and completed that lap, we didn't have enough fuel to do more laps. We wouldn't have had more opportunities to improve on our delta and we thought we could improve on the lap even further but here we go. One minute, ten seconds left on the clock. This is critical stuff. We have to nail this lap. Right now, the current lap time of a 19.1 will not be good enough for pole position. I am certain of that. Through turn one, absolutely beautiful on the track. And two temps up before we even arrive to turn two. Through Casino Square, the left hand. You see, pick up a little bit of understeer. Understeer again as we flick into right-hander. But as long as we can get the traction down around Monaco, that's what's really key it's to the confidence around here in the rain is to be able to flip the car in and know that the rear isn't going to be too unsettled through the hairpin. Bit of a lock up on the front left, but we got the car back to the apex quite nicely. So it didn't really affect you. You pick up quite a bit of understeer through here because we've overheated that front left with that big lock up. But now into the tunnel. As soon as we get underneath the bridge, then you just floor the throttle because the track is completely dry through here. So the traction is much greater than into the rain. Back into the rain, as I said, into the chicane. Now keep it in third gear. Short shift to fourth if you need it. See, picking up a little bit of wheel spin there. We didn't short shift. We decided it would be better to use all the revs on the gearbox. But now you can see a bit of oversteer here. Wheel spin is becoming for the back. Now the swimming pool should cane. Get it down the gears into fourth gear. You can see bouncing over the curb is the fastest way. But make sure you don't cut the corner into Raskas. Get the car rotated. Now into the final corner. Critical to pick up. Good traction here. Short shift to fourth. Get the car straight. And now it's the run to the line. Went purple, purple. Can we get pole position here in Monaco? We go faster than anyone. And it does confirm to be pole position. You see almost a tenth up on Shinaki Clay. And a full tenth up and by Bournemouth. So that was a very good result for us. And you can see it sets us up perfectly in Monaco on the grid. Now three lights, four lights, five lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. So you're picking up an awesome start. Two tenths ahead. Even before we get to turn one. Now this is really where the challenge is at its greatest. Because we've just come out of a wet qualifying session. And now we're into a bone dry racetrack. So you have to adapt the mentality. You see being quite cautious through here. Although we're up against the barriers. So he wasn't too cautious. But 
You have to make sure you don't make a silly mistake turning in too early or just carrying a bit too much speed or even going too slowly because it might leave you vulnerable to the cars behind. See, we're doing a pretty good job so far. And you can see six, seven temps up on Schnacker Clay going into the tunnel. But we need to do a bit more than that. Hopefully we can break the DRS, but I can say we didn't break the DRS. And you can see Schnacker Clay and Bayer Bournemouth did go for the undercut right now. And this is where the two strategies are going to play out. About half the good went I to the soft and half me. the good went to the mediums. So it's all going to be about traffic and where you can filter out. And that's who's going to win the race is the best person to filter out with the traffic. So you coming through turn one. We was able to cover Critical. off the undercut from Nashka Clay and Bayer Bournemouth. So coming out in the theoretical race lead. But you can see you've got Josh Ida with four seconds in front of us. And on the fresh medium compound tyres, tires. it's going to take no time at all to catch up. You see lap nine already on the back of Josh and McLaren. You can see there's a massive train. We know it's critical to get past. We go around the outside of Josh. I had to break a bit earlier to avoid Alessio Di Capa. But now up the inside for the hairpin and Exhausting. Josh is going to hang it around the outside wheel, of us. And this, this is amazing racing. You go side by side for the hairpin. Not touching wheels yet. I'd go for a bit of a switch back here, but wasn't able to pick up the power early enough to get the move done. Josh even leads us face on the apex. So big respect to him there. But now you know this is critical coming up to Casino Square. We go to the right-hand side, fake to the left, and down the inside. You see Josh gives up the apex, so I think he knows the move is done quite early on there. But now, skipping forward to the next lap, we need to be picking off cars one per lap at the moment around Monaco. That is not the easiest challenge in the world. See, lap 11 now. See, Alessio Di Capo goes a bit defensive into turn one, run up the hill. We're not close enough to go what we did uh, to Josh Idwu last lap, but you can see we was 1.8 seconds slower than our personal best so far in this race last lap. This is critical for us to get through this traffic as fast as possible. Still a lot of cars ahead of us. See, Alessio Di Capo goes early on the brakes. Oh, come just on, he just pushed me to the, the wall, wall man. And that does actually give us a bit of front wing damage as we make contact. You see, going around the outside of the hairpin, though. Beautiful reaction. Fucking wreck. And absolutely making the most of a bad situation right now. You can see lap 11. And now we've got a bit of front wing damage to contend with. You see flicking through. You see the front right is a bit lighter green than the front left. He gave the me the damage. So it could not be that bad of a thing, though. It could help save the front tire, uh, save the rear tires, I mean. The front tires going to understeer a bit more. You can see a bit of understeer as we come through the dirty air. We spent four laps behind Simon. We wasn't able to clear him. But Simon does a really nice gesture here. And he actually lets us pass. We actually get caught a little bit off guard there. Because I wasn't expecting him to do that. So I was following him for the slipstream. But very big thank you to Simon. Already to the end of that lap, all over the back of Liam. And see, coming down to turn one, he goes a bit defensive. We pull to the outside to make sure we maximise the exit. You see his battery is flashing. So we've got 10, 20% more battery then. Coming up the hill, fake to the right, goes left again. Now deep on the brakes, he's super close to contact. But with the fresher tyres, we're able to hang it on the inside. And that, that's going to be my favourite overtake of the whole race. Beautiful stuff. But... Sadly, with all that battling, we actually lost the track position. So we're at, right now, we are in fifth position with only eight laps to go. You see Sam right behind us on the fresh soft compound tyre. So he's absolutely pushing us right now. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? A Williams trying to overtake a different driver around Monaco on fresher tyres. <laughs> Bit of a mantle situation going on here. But I've got to defend for my life. You see, all the way defending... Coming to the end of the first set to split. You see, Sam was doing an amazing job in my dirty air to keep pressuring me and to try and push me into these mistakes. But for me, I wasn't able to crack from these mistakes. I was able to defend. See, coming down, you see, going defensive again. He tries to look around my outside and we just break him nicely, get the car stopped in the apex, defensive oh, into the so head. Much fun, man. Around Monaco. As long as you put the car in the middle of the road, it's going to be very difficult for the other car to overtake you. They have to catch you unaware see now down to turn one end of lap 34 starting lap 35 he makes me go a bit defensive into turn one you see 2.2 seconds slower than my personal best run up the hill this is probably his best opportunity for far as close as it's been but you see we cover off the inside he isn't able to look down the inside just yet but i can tell right now he's getting a little bit frustrated um so it's going to be quite interesting to see if we can keep in front of him you see darting left and right in my mirrors we just park the car to the middle of the track like i was saying using the middle lane and making sure he can't get past. You see, already in the same lap. And he's attacking us down the chicane. Big lock up at the front left. Only just getting the car stopped. And see, that was my tactic. Just get the car stopped on the apex. And he can't really do anything from there. Now, the end of the same lap. This is immense pressure right now. Trying to hang on to P5. 
because we can still fight for the championship, but we need to hang on to every point we can get. Run up the hill. He's super, super close again. You see, we're running out of battery pretty fast. But now he's going to look to the outside of us through the casino square. And you see, we're pushing him I as much as possible, but leaving the car space was critical. So it is clean racing. It's hard racing, but clean racing now going defensive into the end of the first sector split. But you can see he's able just not to get past us at the moment. And this is probably the best defending I've done in a very long time. <laughs> but you can see going on to the final lap of the race now. We've got four attempts to him. His soft compound tyres would have degraded by this point. So he'd still be faster than us. But he wouldn't have the, enough pace advantage to make a serious attack unless we make a mistake. You see, draining the last bit of our battery through the tunnel just to ensure he can't get close enough to make an overtake. Food is You don't need to risk a corner cut warning here. But... This has been a very positive race for us. We put it on pole position. We got a bit unlucky with the strategy being caught up in the traffic. But in terms of raw performance, you can see we're 19 seconds ahead of Nicholas Longay. Our next closest Guys, person had the same strategy to us. Respect, so you can see our that ability awesome. to overtake in the traffic was critical this race to finishing with a good point tool in the end of it. But coming up to line, see Weaving to go to show Sam some respect because it was really amazing racing. I think was really, really special with him because as well, both of us were clean and I'm very impressed by him in this race, but you can see 23 seconds off the lead was very disappointing in all things considered. But this is racing, like I say. So yeah, it wasn't really the result that we had imagined going into the formation lap. You know, we was hoping to be on the top step of that podium, making my first PSGR win. But these things are racing, you know. We made the best of a bad situation, making some fantastic overtakes around Monaco. And we was like 20 seconds ahead of the nearest car on the same strategy as me. So you saw how critical it was to clear the traffic in the middle of that race. But it's all a learning lesson going forward. And for me, I believe I drove fantastically. I know I really, I really maximized myself. And part of my reason to do PSGR, as I talked about in the first video of the season, was to learn and grow myself getting ready for F1 Esports in 2022. And I really feel I'm making steps within myself, taking my first pole position in quite a long time. And you saw my race craft was very clean, was very decisive, was very um, attacking as well, to put it into three word summary. So I feel really confident in myself right now and attacking for the rest of the season. This championship campaign is definitely not over and I'm pushing to become the PSGL world champion. So we've got the rest of the season to look forward to. I'm going to keep on posting my links in the description. If you want to follow them, it'll really mean a lot to me. But for now, glad to you was actually. Ciao, ciao.